Um, so Joshua, I want to do a throwback clip with you and an announcement, and then we're going to do uh, Rebel Music History. But let's start with, we're going to do another throwback. This is Cornell West. This is probably in the mid 90s. Because I think this is a lecture on race matters, which I think came out in 1994. And he's talking about prophetic spirituality. And I want to intro this in two ways. I, lo I love the Machiavelli spirituality synth synthesis. We're going to keep hitting that. This would be an example that I would not take out into the broad mainstream world, but I think it's actually a fun example for, for us that actually proves the point of being Gramscian, but it comes from Mao. And I was reminded recently of reading about Mao that Mao always would locate his revolutionary struggle, and I'm forgetting the name, but one of his references was like a classic romantic Chinese novel of like a, a bandit who like robbed from the rich and gave to the poor. And this novel was like beloved in Chinese society. And the point was, was that instead of trying to like wrangle people in with like this Marxist Leninist terminology, he could just say like, Oh, well, we're in the mountains because we're doing what this like beloved character you love is doing. Right. And so this in general, I think is the approach and to me, it's also, I, I think there's a higher level point about the place for spirituality, which is actually very important as a, as a practice. And I mentioned Schlotterdijk the other week is a set of expanding awareness and empathy that doesn't necessarily entail any particular belief. But I also think, and I see it like on social media, I, I quoted Pope Francis the other week. He said something good about our global moment. And I always get the handful of like, oh, I can't believe that he would quote this guy who believes in the Easter Bunny or whatever, you know, whatever kind of like knee jerk, boring as fuck, you know, kind of high school atheist stuff. And I'll keep reiterating, look, great, be an atheist. That's awesome. Uh, most of my main influences are atheists for sure. But if we want to capture the hegemonic mood of most of the country, let alone the world, <laughs> we're going to need to have some space for people's religious expression. And so there's just a lot of stuff uh, embedded in that that comes through in this Cornell West clip from 1994. My God, how much we need a prophetic spirituality in our day that fuses substantive talk about love or the tough talk about justice. That's what I've come to do this afternoon, is to talk about Brother Martin and the tradition that produced him. Because Martin is not an isolated icon or a superhuman hero to put on a pedestal. But he flows out of a long and rich and grand tradition of struggle. A struggle for freedom and a struggle for dignity. It's a tradition of many thousands gone. Many of those, as Brother Michael said, who gave their time, they gave their energy, and some gave their lives to ensure that ordinary people could live lives of decency and dignity. It's a tradition not just of black freedom struggle, but in fact it is the best of the democratic tradition. T.S. Eliot in his famous essay of 1919, Tradition and Individual Talent is absolutely right when he says tradition is not something you inherit if you want it you must obtain it with great labor. The fundamental question for us is to what degree this tradition is still alive in our time. A tradition represented by a sojourner truth or Harriet Tubman or an Ida B. Wells Barnett or an A. Philip Randolph, or an Ella Baker or Fannie Lou 
Hamer, just to mention these names, Dwarf Swan. I, lo I love that. Just to mention these names, Dorf's one. I love that. Mm -hmm. Anyways, open the floor up. So the first thing that strikes me about it is um, I, I just love how he says that we, we don't just get to inherit these traditions. We have to work at them. And the meaning I make of that is calling us into the rigor of study <laughs> and actually learning history. Uh, but also part of that work, there's, to me, there's, there's a level of um, a balance of, of, of humility and innovation, where on one hand, um, he's calling us into understanding that we do stand on the shoulders of our movement ancestors. We don't need to reinvent the wheel. We can locate ourselves in uh, this you know, we, we can step out of the immediacy of our moment, locate ourselves in a larger historical arc and learn from it. And then on the other hand, I think part of what that work is, mm -hmm. is also recognizing that we live in a new historical moment and we can't just repeat the same things that happened in the past. And we do need to innovate and we can't let ourselves be held hostage to the ways things were done, which I think is fundamentally a perspective on spirits constantly renewing itself. You know, when it, like the... Um, you know, he started the clip by invoking Dr. King, uh, whose most famous quote that I think you, you share on the show a lot is power without love is reckless and abusive and love without power is sentimental and anemic. Uh, power at its best is love implementing the demands of justice um, and justice at its best is power correcting everything that stands against love. But his other quote about power that we use in the wildfire project all the time uh, is that power properly understood um, is nothing but the ability to achieve purpose. Uh, it's the strength required to bring about social, political, and economic change. And, and to me, that synthesis is in the word purpose, because purpose is fundamentally a spiritual concept, uh, right? It requires us to, you know, uh, have a sense of why are we here on this planet, you know, if not to serve, serve um, each other on the planet. And if, if we need to, if we uh, need the strength in order to actualize purpose, in order to be in our agency, then th that's, that's the material basis for power. And that's how he threads the material and the, the spiritual. Awesome. David? I mean, I think that, you know, what Cornell hits at is, uh, is something that we've been missing for a long time, which is, you know, yeah, as Joshua was talking about the recognition of, you know, the, the tradition, but also like letting the, you know, not having these things be static and actually having them be dynamic things that interact with us um, in our own life and our own like practice and our own politics. Uh, I, I liked the way that you were framing it too. Um, you know, talking about Mao is like, it is going to be important to tell these, these stories and use these figures um, in ways, you know, that motivates people and highlights them to our like political, political goals and not having to reintroduce, you know, a new grammar and a new law, political logic uh, every time we're making an argument or making a new movement. You just watched a Michael Brooks show video. Subscribe to get them all. Why wouldn't you? Don't be foolish. Click subscribe below and become a patron as well. Patreon.com slash TMBS. Thanks, everybody.